me look through that to you. on the side there. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, especially the players who've been so prompt in getting back from lunch so that we can get underway with our semi finals in the Lance Panel Snooker for 2022. I'm very grateful to all the people who work behind the scenes to get us into such a great place, and we're thoroughly able to enjoy these two magnificent matches. On this table here, we will have uh, Saraf Kathari playing against Charlie Tate. Joel Yunker will play against Steve Bipser. <laughs> uh, can everyone please make sure their mobile phone is turned off? And uh, I'm very grateful to everybody who's been associated with all of this today because we've had enormous help from a great many people. I thank especially Dan Lynch and Cuball TV. I hope you enjoy the streaming on this table initially, and then at some later stage, if this table is still going, you might be able to see some of the action over there. Thank you very much. Best of five, I'll leave you in the hands of the referees. Welcome back to the semi-finals of the Lance Panel Snooker Championship 2022. We're currently at the Revington Snooker Academy. We have two of our semi-finalists we're going to watch today. Charlie Chafe from Australia taking on Surav Kothari from India. This will be a best of five match. Charlie is going to break off to commence. So good luck to both players. Suro has been a, 
a visitor many times to Australia with our snooker and billiards tournaments. He's one of the top billiards players in the world these days. Prolific, several hundred break maker. Uh, but he's also quite handy at snooker too. He holds a high break in practice of the possible maximum, 147. And also in a competition, he's managed to make a, a 143 break as well. So it's world class. He's from Kolkata in India. I mentioned I think it's about his 15th trip to Australia, so he enjoys it every time he comes over, he says. So we've just seen Charlie pop the first ball of the, the match, a nice long red there, and he's landed perfectly on the black. also been a competitor over the many years as well from the, the junior days representing Australia in three world under 21 titles around the world held himself in high regard as a, a great player on the table and a, and a great person off it Nine. I'm sure this was the start that he would have loved to have had the first opportunity and he's He's right in amongst the, amongst the reds and the blacks. 16. He might have just fallen out of position there. It didn't appear that he could pop that red ball, but he's... He's played a, a fairly good safety shot. He has left Sura over half an opportunity for a long, long pot. And in these best of five matches, you don't want to, you don't want to give your opposition too many chances. That's a lovely pot by Surav. Just a, a short little stun straight onto the black. And he opens his account as well. Sarov's just weighing up his options, whether to pot the black and come around off two cushions or he looks as though he's going to try and split the pack the one cushion. Probably counting himself a little bit unlucky there. He got a fairly good connection. However, the reds didn't split like he, he was hoping to. left himself unfortunately a, a little bit tricky shot at the start of the match there both players are probably going to take a, a few moments to warm up a little bit get used to the occasion big event getting to the semi-finals of a ranking tournament I'm sure both players want to want to put on a good show and 
display their skills. Surov does have, have an option here to go for a pot on the right hand side but I think he's going to elect to play safety off that little pack of reds in the middle of the table and just take the white ball back up to the bulk end. He's got a fortunate little kiss on the green ball there and left Charlie close to the corner pocket which is quite difficult from that length away from the cue ball to the object ball. And Charlie attempted to actually go for that pot there on that red, but it may not have been the, uh, the ideal shot. He's left Surav a good opportunity to, to create a lead. Should he pop this red ball? So Surov gets himself back in with a, a nice red into the corner pocket. Many of the reds appear to be in an ideal position to make a substantial break on this occasion. Zero's probably weighing up his options here, whether to take the red ball closest to the black, which I believe he is. And it appears the red above that may be obstructing the black spot. So should Surov knock the black ball in here, if it doesn't spot on its own spot, it will spot on the next highest available spot. Uh, we'll see when the referee removes the ball now it obviously doesn't spot on its own so it goes on to the next highest available which is the pink spot which is not obstructed at this stage and it probably is an advantage where all the red balls are for Surav just to pick them off one by one and create a nice little handy lead and possibly win the frame off this visit he looks like he's in control, even at the start of the match. He's had a good weekend of snooker. He has a very good temperament with the game as well, and good attitude. And a very good sportsman. Just slightly hampered by the two reds. There won't be an issue with him. He just, he just managed to scrape that red in. So he's left himself in not ideal position, but good enough to be able to pot the black in from here and get on to the next red. He 
he's taken the opportunity for the, the easy red in the middle and he'll just stun the white fractionally and leave himself for the, the blue or if he goes too far he can he can always take the yellow and come back down for the reds. enough angle on the brown to be able to put the brown and run the white ball off the bottom cushion as he's done which will bring him back down onto the reds again in prime position so he's got a good handy lead up now 34 34 points and that's the, exactly the break that he's on as well at the moment looking pretty ominous that this may be the, the frame winning break. ran out of position with that red ball. I'm sure he ideally would have liked to have been able to run through for the black after potting that red ball. But he does have the option of taking on a, a long blue or cutting the pink ball into the middle pocket. And that's unfortunate for Surav. Nice opening break of 49, however, he's conceded six points to, to Charlie for putting the cue ball into the pocket. So now Charlie's got the opportunity. He can put the white ball anywhere in the D at the end of the table that he's at. And he's played a magnificent pot there. Straight in, full of confidence. hopefully try and take a chunk out of this lead. Hi. Or for Charlie's sake, finish the game on this visit. fraction harder and as soon as it hit the jaw if you hit it at that pace it, it usually will stay out onto the table so this might be the the last opportunity Charlie has to to get back into the frame so a lead of 30 points with Surav potentially 43 points left on the table after he pots this black the Surav would only need to pot the, the penultimate red to make the frame safe. Yeah. No problem with the black going in there, it's just a matter of whether the white ball is going to land directly near the red for it to be potted into the middle pocket. The only danger here is that if he plays the red into the middle, the white ball is going to run towards the right corner pocket and he doesn't want to sink the white ball in and give away another four points to Charlie and get him back into the match. And that, and that was what it looked like he was worried about. Had the red have gone in, maybe the white would have followed in as well. But he's given Charlie a chance to get back into the match now. He's 37, 37 points behind. He's got 43 points on the table. So should he pop this red and a blue, he can still afford to 
pop one of the three higher colours with the last red. Now there's a there's an outlandish fluke that he's just done <laughs> across the table into the middle pocket. As I mentioned, he's 31 points behind, so should he take a, a black ball with the last red and pot all the colours, he'll make a 35, well that's 35 points. He will win the frame on the final ball. The tricky shot this one, he has to get back up for the yellow, and the yellow is obstructed by the green. So he's going to have to find a, a way to get the white ball around position it so we can pop the yellow but it looks as though he's failed to do that and he's played a pretty bad shot there unfortunately for Charlie snookering himself behind the blue He'd be pretty disappointed about that one but the, the frame's definitely not over yet He's given away four points, but he is still in the frame at this stage. He can possibly tie. So there's 27 points left on the table. And with score, he's obviously 20, 27 points behind. So Surav has the option here. He can elect to play the shot himself, which it looks like he's going to do. Otherwise, he could have sent Charlie back in. So he's just playing carefully, trying not to leave Charlie an opportunity to pot the, pot the ball. That's a nice little safety shot by Surav. It doesn't appear Charlie can actually pot the ball there. He may be able to hit half of the ball. So he's forced to play a, a safety shot again. Which he's done quite well, actually. He might have just been unlucky there. Surav can see the yellow between the blue and the pink. Should he pot this? Charlie will be needing snookers if he was to get back into the frame. So he's taken the yellow, which gives him an extra two points. Just leaves, gives him a 29 point lead with only 25 left on the table. So just double checking the scoreboard to make sure that he doesn't have to do anything outlandish here with the green ball. It's going close to going into the pocket there, but he's... You may have snookered Charlie, however, it's probably not a hard snooker to just raise your cue a little bit and swerve around. So Charlie will pop the green and leave himself an opportunity to lay a snooker on Surov so he can force Surov to foul and miss, miss the brown ball so he can get enough points to get back into the, to the, to the frame. I don't think he's hit that as hard as what he intended to. He needed just a little bit more to get behind the black ball.
with Charlie there. He's just made sure that the, the brown was safe as well. And it's probably a bonus that he's able to get the snooker behind the blue ball. And I'm sure with Sirov's experience at billiards and angles and knowledge of the tables that he's, you know, I, I couldn't see him missing this. He'll probably come off the right side cushion if he's got enough enough cushion to get by the pink but he'll probably need to put a little bit of left hand side on it to throw the, the white ball closer to the brown. So he's played the exact shot. And he's probably not too upset that he's left Charlie an opportunity to pot the brown because Charlie still needs to get some more points before we can win this frame. Four. So he takes the, takes the deficit down now to 22 points. Now in the event that he snookers Surav and Surav misses, he'll concede five points. That's, that's, a, that's a very, very good shot that Charlie's just played then. Probably couldn't have asked for any better. And that's a, that's a great recovery from Sir Ravi's. As, as I mentioned before, with his billiards experience, he's quite quite knowledgeable with all the angles on around the table. So Charlie's just tried to manufacture another or a better or a harder snooker, which he's given it a good shot here to come off the the three cushions, and he's probably played the best shot of the match so far. Tried to get it as close as possible to the black ball so it makes the, the degree of the snooker a lot more difficult. Yeah, Sir Rose missed that by uh, quite a way. So he's conceded the five points, so now Charlie's back into this frame now. If he can manage to pop these last three colours, he'll steal the frame by one point. He still has an option here to allow Surav to play from where the, the balls are now, which I think he's, he's let him do that. However, this can backfire sometimes. Had Sir Rover hit that a little bit stronger, he may have been in the same position as Charlie put him in before. So there's a good opportunity now for Charlie to knock in this long blue. However, unfortunately for him, it looks like it might have cost him the frame. So Rob will get out the rest here, but I don't see any problem that he... I think he will knock this in and make the frame safe. Which he's done exactly that. So that leaves Surav 22 points ahead with only a possible 13 points left on the table with both pink and black. And it appears though Charlie's conceded that frame. Both players will reset and come back in a few minutes for commencement of frame two. So we will see you then and we'll update you with the other semi-final match shortly.
Welcome back to the semi-final of the Lance Panel Snooker Championship of 2022. We're just watching Surav Kothari playing Charlie Chafe, second frame. Surav took the first frame. He currently leads 1-0 in this best of five match. And for those of you who are interested in the, the second semi-final, just over on the right-hand side of the left-hand side of the screen there, we've got Joel Younger playing Steve Mifsud, and Joel has currently taken the first frame in that particular match as well. So we'll keep you posted with that regular intervals. Charlie's attempted to just hit that red fine enough, but in doing so, he's missed the red altogether, giving away four points to his opponent. So in that respect, it wasn't too much damage for Charlie. He didn't leave Surav an opportunity to get in and make a substantial break. Both players are, will be eager to just settle in a little bit more than the, their opponent. That was a nice safety shot by Charlie. Off two cushions, snookering Surraf behind the yellow. It won't be any problem in actually hitting a red here. But he has landed a little bit too far on the left hand side, so he's given Charlie the opportunity to start his account in this frame. opening red of this frame and he's got a, a simple blue into the middle pocket and probably a bit fortunate there with the position just flicked the red on the way back and it's landed him in prime position to continue the break Good opportunity for him to take on the blue ball into the middle pocket. And at the same time, the white ball will hopefully go canning in, into the middle of the, the pink, which will open up the pack of reds. He played a very nice shot there. And he was very lucky that the pink ball just stayed out of the middle pocket there. So, and it looks as though he's got a good opportunity to string a few points together here. Couldn't have asked for a better split with the pack of reds. Now Charlie needs to try and just hold his nerve together here. Now the referee, if you just saw then, the referee was pointing towards that red ball. It was basically telling Charlie it's a touching ball situation, which means the red ball is touching the white. So if uh, so Charlie has to actually hit away from that red ball that it's touching, he can still go for another red and pop that. Or otherwise, if there was no other option, he could just hit far away from that red ball and it would not be a foul because hence it's already classed as touching the ball. So he needs to try and get back into prime position off this red ball. He was attempting to run up to the middle of the table to get the blue. Unfortunately, canning into that red 
and has left him quite difficult shot. And considering where all the, the red balls are, this is a, a big risk versus reward shot. Should he get it? He keeps that handy lead, which he's done. Some, made a magnificent pot, long pot into the corner. So that'll give him good confidence too. It gives him a lead of 20 odd points. All the red balls are opened up. Just has to try and maintain good position and increase that lead in this frame. He's played another nice shot there. So he's, it took a few shots, but he's back into prime position now. action and his demeanour, he, he looks quite confident. We may just see whether this black will spot on its spot. Okay, so that's, that's unfortunate for Charlie. He's still got a couple of options. There's two reds that may go into the, the yellow corner pocket. However, that, that is a risky shot from there. The red that it looks like he's attempting to pot may go into the middle. He has to hit this perfect, and which he has done. So he's made a good, another good recovery shot there to keep himself in the break. And potentially increase his lead enough for a, a frame winning visit. The break goes past 40 at the moment now. But I think the way he's looking, he looks comfortable that this could be quite a quite a good break on the horizon. Good rhythm. He's not playing too fast. He's a naturally quicker player. 51. But he does look like in full control at the moment. So a nice shot there to screw back for either red ball into the left corner pocket and just a simple stun to stay on the black ball. 59. The break moves on to 59. ball and that should be the, the frame safe. 67. And yeah, that, that was what he didn't want. 74. He does have a 70 point lead so technically the frame is safe at this stage. There's only 67 points left on the table for Surov. However, I'm sure he wanted to make the frame absolutely 100% safe. He's still got a chance to pop this into the yellow pocket. It's a little bit more tricky than what he would have hoped. And, th and there we go. He's just clipped the jaw, but nevertheless, very good break of 74 by Charlie to open up, open up a lead. As an example for uh, people that aren't familiar with the points in the snooker, if Sarav was to pot a coloured ball or a black ball with all these red balls and then all the coloured balls, he would have 67 points. But where all the red balls are at the moment, it's unlikely that he's going to get the, the black ball with every red ball. 
So I think Charlie will be feeling quite safe at this stage that it will be one all in short term. And should he should he pop this red in, that will probably seal the frame. So I think shortly we're going to be at one all. A little bit more just potting practice for, for Charlie getting into the frame number three. Getting used to the speed of the table and the bounce of the table. And more so just keeping your opponent away from the table and keep them cold. So 80 points to four, the, the frame's pretty much wrapped up. Surav appears not to be coming back to the table, so I think it's safe to say that he's conceded that second frame. The scores at the moment are one frame apiece. We'll be back for th frame three shortly. Thank you. Welcome back to the first semi-final of the Lance Panel Snooker Championship. We're in frame number three with Surav Kothari playing Charlie Chafe. Frame two, we saw Charlie make a, a nice 74 break, which was enough to level the match. On our second table, the second semi-final, Steve Mifsud playing Joel Younger. Currently, they're still in their second frame at the moment. Joel currently leads that one frame to nil. One. Charlie has, has knocked in a, another very good opening red. Nice position to pot the black and continue from where he left off last time. I think he has enough of an angle to, to screw back. No, he might have just rushed that uh, slightly. So the break ends there. 
but there's no damage being done. He hasn't left Sir an opportunity to, to score from here. So we're back to a slight, cagey little safety battle. For one player to wait for the opportunity for his opponent to make a, an error in judgment or play a bad shot. And that was a risky shot from Charlie. Had he have potted it? Yes, he was in good position to commence another break. But again, having missed, he's probably lucky there that he's left Surav with not a great deal to not a great option to pop the ball. This, this could be on into the green corner pocket. And he's played that well. Played that very well. And Charlie sat back in his seat probably thinking, maybe shouldn't have taken on that red before. Probably not the right shot depending on how much damage Surav can conjure up here. So he's got an opportunity with that red up underneath on the left hand side into the corner pocket to either hold the white ball for the black or to run the white ball off the cushion back up for the blue ball. And he's played that one quite well too. has a, a very compact and simple deliberate action very solid years years of practice these days it's very elongated long long backswing almost back to the point of the their thumb but Surav's got a very nice short and, and solid solid swing to his approach he's left himself a tricky little pot here the white ball too close to the cushion And that's the result that didn't get the pot that he would have wanted. So he opens up a slight little lead of 12 points. Still plenty of, plenty of points left on the table for both players. Here we see Charlie Probably just making another little error in judgment there. Just red ball crept close to the pocket, so it's given Surev another good opportunity to increase the lead again.
just appears Surad Surav might be Surav. just a little bit tense at this stage. He's getting the opportunities to get in and make a substantial break. However, he's not taking advantage of it at, at the moment. And so Charlie's taken full advantage of that, that he's, he's laid a good snooker on Sarov. Yeah, no, no issue there to actually hit a red from where it is. It's just the, the, main, the main thing for Surav is not to leave a red ball on for Charlie to continue. So it looks like that's, he's played that very well. Charlie's attempted a similar shot. But he may have just hit it a fraction thicker then and hasn't gone behind the green and the yellow. So I think this is where Surav can fight his way back into this frame. If he can manage to get a good snooker, good safety shot off, off this particular shot here, which he has done, almost. Be interesting to see if Charlie actually has a go at this red or if he's got a bit of patience and he tries to play a safety shot as well, which he's done the latter. I think that was a good decision. So both players are just waiting for that opportunity to, for that mistake with their opponent. Suro's probably a little bit fortunate there that it appears the red ball is obstructed by the black, but that maybe Charlie may just have enough to to get round it with a little bit of side. He does it quite comfortably. Big shot here for Charlie too. If he pots this, he's got the red at the bottom of the pack where he can continue the break. And more than likely get a lead up with this visit. Charlie's sake, those two little errors that he played earlier in the frame hasn't hasn't hurt him. Surov didn't take that opportunity. And now he's given it back to Charlie. It's a tricky little shot here for the red at the bottom of the pack. The white should naturally cannon into the, the second red above that and land onto the black ball again to continue the break. He just left himself a little bit too tricky a shot there. Yeah, they've opened up the reds quite well so this could be anyone's frame at the moment. And from where the, the position, where the white ball's landed, I think Charlie can count his lucky stars again. But doesn't appear to be a, an easy red ball to, to pot from there, which only leads to more frustration for Surov because he's just waiting for a perfect opportunity to, to get in and pot a few more balls.
sometimes even a frame or even a match can come down to a little bit of luck here and there. I think he's just debating where to try and leave the white ball after this shot and I'm thinking he's going to put it behind the black and as close to the cushion as possible to make it more difficult for Charlie. So there's, there's no damage there, that's, that's not a bad safety shot. Charlie's got to just take his time here and, and think of the best possible place where to leave Surab. That's a pretty good safety shot from there. Sarev has to be careful here that he doesn't leave Charlie that red closest to the yellow and the brown on the left side of the table. Give him an opportunity to pop that in the middle pocket. So he would like to try and leave the white ball where it is now, but he may not have that option. Bit of luck there that he, he didn't leave that red ball near the middle but he still has given Charlie an opportunity to take on a long pot so I think he's going to have a go at this and he's played it great that very well and it's just a does he get a bit of luck with his position and unfortunately for Charlie it just didn't come off the way he wanted the position wise but he's still on the table so he's still in control and he's just laid up behind the brown ball <coughs> the pressure a little bit back on Surav to not only get out of the snooker, but to leave it safe. Which he's, he's hit the wrong side of the red ball there. I believe he wanted to leave the white back up near the yellow. Charlie's got a good opportunity now to take the lead. There's only six reds left on the table. <coughs> He's in a good position here to go 2 1 up in this best of five. Seven. Yeah, just about holding him. <coughs> Keeping composed, playing the same speed all the time. Oops, and there's the pressure. Might have just rushed that ball just a little bit too quick. Hence, missed, missed the, the black ball. And now Surav's jumped out of his chair like Jiminy Cricket. Is it a a good chance here that he could turn it round. It's probably the perfect chance that he wanted to, to have an easy, easy little few shots and get himself back into this frame.
Nine. Still has a little bit of work to do. Let's just open up a slight lead. Rev also needs to find a way <coughs> to develop that red that's on the left left hand cushion. 16. If he's to win this frame with this visit. Played a good shot there just to stun the, the white ball off the cushion, leave himself an easy red for the middle pocket. There won't be any problem here. The, the main part here is getting the perfect position to pop the black to knock that last red out. So it's a pretty important shot this one. Like he's played it pretty well. He's left himself, I think, enough angle just to pop the black to stun over to the red. Well, he's got the red out, but it might be a, a tricky pot here. He could probably like to go to the middle pocket or the right corner pocket. I think he'll probably take the corner pocket as a shot to nothing. If he, if he misses, he leaves a white safe, but he's made a liar out of him, he's going to the middle pocket. And he's shaking his head, looks still undecided. He's just taking a step back, composing himself. I think he's going to go for the middle and attempt to take the block after the shot. Yeah, he just he, he wasn't he wasn't sure what to do there I think and that might have been the reason why he, he didn't pop that red. But he's opened up a good lead, 28 points. So Charlie can still win with a, a red and any colour if he if he pops them all in. He'll steal the frame on the black ball. just appears to have lost a little bit of composure from frame two when he made that 70 odd break. Surav with enough points or enough lead for Charlie needing snookers. So it appears that he's going to take a 2 1 lead. And Charlie will have to reset, recompose himself for frame four if he's to get back into this match. Six. Surev just going through the motions of clearing the colours and readiness for the next frame. That's a nice 
last pot on the pink ball. 26. And to finish the frame off. A good little clearance. Although it doesn't matter if he missed that. He takes a 2 1 lead going into the semi final. He needs one more frame to go through to the final against either Joel Younger or Steve Bifford. And in that game, Joel still currently leads one frame to nil. And we'll be back shortly. Thank you. Welcome back to frame four of the Lance Panel Snooker Championship semi-finals. We've got Suraf Kathari, got a 2-1 lead over Charlie Chafe. Both players had opportunities in frame three to, to go 2-1 up. And Surav took his chances later in the frame and got over the line. Charlie's just knocked in a, a really, really good long, long red there and left himself a, a reasonable position to sink the black. I think he, he needs to just compose himself to, if he's going to take this into a final frame. Just needs to take a step back. Maybe slow his game down a fraction just to give himself that little bit more time to line up the shot. And we all saw what he's capable of in the second frame where he made that 70 break. So 
Rev is just as capable of doing that as well, given the opportunity. So this is a nice start for Charlie. Straight into frame four. Pots a good long red ball. And it appears that he's got a little bit of confidence back. Just felt fell a little bit short getting onto the blue ball there. He would have been would have rather been the other side of the blue to be able to bring the white back down. Wow. Just unfortunately potted the blue and knocked the green in as well, which is a foul and gives the opponent five points. those of you are wondering why it wasn't four points for a foul, it's the highest possible colour. If a foul is committed on the blue, it's a five point penalty. And the same as if it was the black ball, it would be a seven point penalty. But the minimum penalty is four points. So now the referee is just checking now after a foul if it's a free ball. And what a free ball means if the player can't hit both sides of the object ball, which are at this stage the reds. The, the player has an option to take a free ball, meaning he can take any coloured ball on the table, which is substituted as a red. And should he pop that red ball or pop that coloured ball, it counts as one point. And then he can elect to play an additional colour. So it's basically an extra red you're getting as a free ball. Surav's just played the, the percentages there. He's played a nice safety shot and hasn't left Charlie anything. So Charlie's just going to try and do the same thing and create that, create that mistake for the opposition player. So the, the Reds have opened up quite nice now. Surav appears that it looks like he's going to attempt to pot that red ball and bring the white ball around the back of the black to get onto the black ball, but he, he just doesn't look 100% confident that that's going to work. So I think he's taking on the, the ball on the left-hand side near the cushion. That's a good shot from there. He still left himself on the black. It's a, it's a tricky pot from there under the circumstances. Yeah, that's a very good shot there. Looking pretty ominous for Charlie if Surav manages to knock in a few more reds and colours. That lead's just going to extend far enough where Charlie may not be able to come back. Thank 
potted the black in. Unfortunately, he didn't get the, the cannon into the reds that, that he'd hoped in the position. That red to the left of the screen, it may be on into the right-hand corner pocket. So he, he could take that on. However, he's elected to play the safety shot. He's just opened up a 10-point advantage. So he doesn't want Charlie, doesn't want to give Charlie the opportunity to get back into this match. Surav has an opportunity for a red ball into the corner pocket. And he's probably lucky there where he's left Charlie snookered and he, he can't pop that red. He's looking, so it must be quite close. Charlie, is he prepared to take the risk? That doesn't appear to be the case. He just wants to try and keep that red safe, although it looks like he's given Surab the opportunity to knock that long red in. on the way through and landed quite good on the bulk colours there. So there's a good chance for Sarov to get a frame winning break here and go through to the final. Looking dangerous. Probably a bit fortunate there too. He was holding his breath. <coughs> but in the end, it's probably landed perfect for him to pop this red and stay on the black. Might be just that little bit of luck he needed to get him over the line. The reds are in great position to finish the the frame off from here. Surav's so looking pretty composed now. I'd be surprised if he if he breaks down on on this visit. I think he's going to take this opportunity. He's looking very calm, relaxed. As, as well as determined. He wants to get into his second final of the Lance panel. Asking the referee, there may be something on the, the black ball or a bit of dust or chalk that can obstruct the, the object ball. 
just asking the referee to, to clean it before playing the shot. Players aren't allowed to touch the ball, but the referees have got the equipment to do that. He gave himself enough time just to compose himself. Play a good shot on that red. To get on to that red. Ahead, or 39 points ahead. I beg your pardon. So should he pot this pink, he would need another red and another colour to make the frame safe. Which the, the way he looks at the moment, I think he's he's going to do that quite comfortably. ball, he pots this, he, Charlie is left needing snookers and where they lie at the moment I think Charlie will be staying in his seat. Surav showing great composure here in this, in this final break. Casually and comfortably, just taking his time. Hopefully, finishing off the match in style. Not quite a century break on, but there's a. If he manages to pop the last two reds with the, the higher colours, should be in the 90s. I think Charlie can be happy with his tournament as well. And he's been out of the game for a little while and he's getting back into it. And good on him for making the semi final. Previous Australian Open champion himself back in 2015. And, and pop black snooker champion prior to that. He knows what it's like to be in big matches and perform in big tournaments. Just today wasn't his day. Looks as though Sarev's going to wrap up this match in style. Possible 93 break. Just a formality now with the four colours left. The break goes to 80. And for those of you who are following Joel Younger's semi final against Steve Wilson, Joel's just taken a, a 2 0 lead in the best of five. And we see Sarov pot the last ball for a 93 clearance and the end of the match. He's defeated Charlie Chase 3 1.
Welcome back to the Lance Panel Snooker Championship. We've just witnessed Suraf Kathari from India make it into the final by defeating Charlie Chafe in the first semi final, three frames to one. We've just cut over to the second semi final where Joel Younger, who's at the table at the moment, is playing Steve Mifsud. Currently, Joel is leading this match 2 0. We don't have the score available at the moment, but I will keep you updated regularly with the scores during this frame. Joel currently on a break of 24. As we see the scores midway through this third frame of the semi final. Joel has probably caught the, the pack of reds there, fraction thin. Would have preferred the white to be around closer to the reds. But he's still got an option to play a red ball into the middle pocket to continue on the break. Slightly cued it a little bit wrong. And he's left Steve an opportunity to get back into this match. Joel, being a, an avid Collingwood supporter, told me before the match that he had tickets to go to today's game and he's in the semi-finals. And, but I think he would rather be here showing off his talent. So another, another nice pot by Joel there.
where the reds lie at the moment, this is probably a perfect chance for Joel to finish this on this visit. Joel's been one of Australia's top players for many, many years now, starting off back when he was about 13 or 14 in the junior tournaments. Always showed great potential back then. And that's just followed on into the, the Open era. Won a number of tournaments over his career, and turned professional. He has a maximum break to his credit as well. and was a semi-finalist in the IBSF World Championships back in 1996. Appears he just fell out of position there, so he's played a safety shot on Steve. Got a 20 point lead at this stage. And he's, he's purposely placed the yellow close to the cushion as a fail safe, should Steve come back and pot a few red balls, it's more difficult to continue the break if a, a ball's close to the cushion. And it looks like that's gone all wrong there. Appears to be a straight red available to Joel into the, the yellow corner pocket. And that's a nice shot that he's played there. Casually rolled that in. It's a 26 point lead and it's 59 left on the table so another two reds with two colours may seem over the line in this match. Joel just may have lifted his head a fraction there, it could be just nerves closing out the match happens to the best of them. Three reds left on the table. Not in ideal position. Player of Joel's talent might be able to prove me wrong. Not only is Joel a talented snooker player, he's very talented at eight ball, nine ball. He's represented Australia in a lot of those Q sports as well. Could 
possibly say he's the, the best all-rounded player in Australia for Q Sports. And it looks like he's sealed the match and Steve's conceded the, the match. Uh, Joel Young goes through to the final. A 3-0 victory over Steve Nifsid. And he will play Suref Kothari. We will see you back all later for the final. Until then, that's all for now.